It is now with great pleasure that I introduce our commencement speaker, who embodies our commitment to fostering diversity in engineering and advancing the field. Diane Bryant is the Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Data Center Group for Intel Corporation. Ms. Bryan earned her degree in electrical engineering from UC Davis in 1985. She was the first in her family to go to college and started out as a circuit engineer and is now recognized as one of Fortune's 50 most powerful women in business. She manages Intel's $16 billion data center group and holds four U.S. patents, all received while part of Intel's mobile group. Ms. Bryan is known for her tireless efforts to advance diversity in the STEM fields. She created the UC Davis Diane Bryant Endowed Scholarship for Women in Engineering. And at Intel, she is the executive sponsor of the network of Intel African American employees. Please join me in welcoming Diane Bryant. So it is truly an honor to address the UC Davis College of Engineering Class of 2016. As noted, I am also a proud Aggie, and my success in the tech industry is deeply rooted in the outstanding education that I received here at UC Davis. You might think that my success as an engineer is attributed to a deep passion for math and science. Well, I have some confessions for you today that I'd like to share, starting with confession number one. I picked engineering by happenstance. I was sitting in my freshman Calculus II class, and the kid sitting next to me asked me what my major was. I told him I was undeclared. At the time, I was attending local community college because I didn't have the money to go to university. My dad had proved good to his promise that when we hit 18, we were adults and we were on our own. At that point, his legal obligations for us were over. So my sister was older and she was fortunate in that she turned 18 in August after graduating from high school. I turned 18 in February and found myself homeless for four months remaining to graduation. So the one thing I knew for sure is whatever major I picked, it was gonna guarantee me financial security and independence. I was not going to be poor. So when I told the kid in Calculus II I had not declared a major, he said, well, you should be an engineer. It's the highest starting salary you can earn with a bachelor's degree. So I, I amen. So I left, I left calculus class. I went straight to the counselor's office and I told the counselor I wanted to declare my major as engineering. And she said, that's great. Hardware or software? And I panicked, oh Lord, there's more than one? <laughs> and so then off to UC Davis I went. So you'll be happy to know that in terms of starting salary, things haven't changed. 10 of the top 10 paying jobs for the graduating class of 2016 are engineering. A recent time survey found that engineering degrees produce the most millionaires. And engineering is the most common degree amongst the world's CEOs. Now, I know that none of you are as shallow as me and interested only in the money, but I do, I do want to emphasize uh, that although I was monetarily motivated in entering the field, I have remained in engineering for 30 years because of the positive and rewarding impact of the work. Which brings me to confession number two. I will admit that it has not always been easy. The tech industry is not a poster child for diversity. And being part of a minority population comes with challenges. Women are 50% of the US population, 57% of the college educated, and yet only 23% of the tech population and 28% of all engineering. African Americans make up just 5% and Hispanics just 6%. The lack of equal representation in engineering and technology is an issue. It's an issue because no group should be left out of such a high impact, high value, high reward profession as engineering. But it's also an issue because diversity of thought and diversity of experience is critical to innovation. 
to devising the best solution and obtaining the best results. Gordon Moore is Intel's co-founder and the inventor of Moore's Law, which is the foundation for the tech industry. He was asked in an interview about his secret to making really tough decisions. And his response was that you don't need to worry about the tough decisions. Most often, they're tough because the outcome between the two available options is close. He said, you might as well just flip a coin and move on. However, he said, it is with the seemingly easy decisions that you need to be careful. These are the problems for which the solution appears obvious, obvious to all. No one is questioning the decision. No one is providing a counter opinion. Why? In my 30 years at Intel, I would say that those situations arise when the people sitting around the decision table are homogeneous. They have had similar experience. They have similar backgrounds. They view the world through a common lens, resulting in a common conclusion. So I agree with Gordon Moore. One should be concerned when all the heads are nodding yes. Diversity of opinion matters. In fact, it's critical given the impact engineering has on society. And it's hard to not get excited about the impact you all can have together. While invention has always brought societal benefit, Historically, the innovation cycle has been a long one. Heck, between the invention of fire in 500,000 BC to the invention of the wheel, 497,000 years passed. So, confession number three is I'm not a particularly patient person, which is why I have found the field of technology so compelling. Our industry moves at lightning speed. And with that speed, the world has become increasingly dependent upon information and communication technology. Technology is disrupting and transforming the world around us. Technology has moved from penetrating all industries to permeating them. For example, in five years, Uber has transformed the taxi industry, leveraging cloud computing and the on-demand economy to deliver real-time dispatch of personally owned vehicles. Airbnb has transformed the hotel industry, leveraging social media, the cloud, and the sharing economy. China's red envelope cloud service is solving the absence of banking in the many remote regions of China, creating a consumer-to-consumer -consumer digital currency exchange capability. It was launched just two years ago, and today red envelope users are sending more than 4 billion electronic envelopes of money to each other every month. You are entering the workforce at an incredibly exciting and dynamic time. It was just three years ago, in fact, in a survey of 1,000 Americans that 51% of the respondents said that weather could interfere with cloud computing. In just three years, I'm sure none of you were part of that survey, in just three years, cloud computing has gone from perplexing to mainstream, and it has unleashed massive innovation. One example of the significant opportunity for societal impact is in the healthcare industry. A program that I'm currently leading at Intel is in using technology to enable the cure of cancer. We've joined forces with the healthcare industry and cancer research institutes around the world to create personalized precision treatment. We call the program All in One Day by 2020, meaning that if you are suffering from cancer, you will be able to go into your doctor's office, have your full genome sequenced, the doctor will compare your tumor against genome sequences from all around the world, find the matches, the treatments delivered, and the patient outcome, did the patient survive or not, and then prescribe you a personalized treatment and do all of that in one day. The sharing, <clears throat> the sharing of genome sequences doesn't exist today, because of security and intellectual property concerns. Yet the largest cancer research institute in the world holds less than 1% of the world's sequences. So sharing is a must. This can be solved through tight collaboration between the tech industry and the healthcare industry. We can and we will deliver the breakthrough. My mom died of cancer when she was 54. A half of all men and a third of all women will get cancer in their lifetime. The stakes are high and the potential for impact is great. From cancer, we can then move on to the many other diseases discoverable through DNA like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And we will know we have succeeded when digital health is simply called health. 
My final confession, while I had not planned to be an engineer, my career has been immensely rewarding. And I have found the secret to success to be far, far simpler than I had ever led to believe. All it takes is passion, curiosity, the confidence and the tenacity to continue after the inevitable failure, and a respect for the value of diversity. The opportunities for you to have a lasting impact on the world are immense. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you.